Hey, good news. If you go to Ubuntu.com, U-B-U-N-T-U, this is one of the most popular, if not the most popular, uh, Linux downloads. Linux is a free operating system created by Finnish graduate student Linus Torvalds in the early 90s. He gave it away. He said, I'm going to keep the trademark, but I'm not going to patent it. I'm not going to trademark it. And, you know, I bet at this point he kind of wishes he had because Linux is running everything. It's running many of the Internet sites you visit. Linux is the software behind all Android devices, all Chrome OS devices. It is a robust, mature operating system that will let you do everything you want, and it doesn't cost you anything. If you go to Ubuntu.com, you'll see that this says 16.04L. LTS is here. For most people, LTS is the version of Linux you want to use. I, uh, I've tried, there are other kinds of releases. There's things called rolling releases and bleeding edge releases where you get the latest software, but you might have to put up with some hobbyist problems. And this is one of the reasons I think Linux gets a bad name is people use those releases or they use a Linux that is not stable and they get problems. Things stop working, they have to spend time tweaking it. Ubuntu really has the advantage of having been around for a long time. Mark Shuttleworth, the dot-com millionaire who put his money into it, has really done a great job. I stopped using Ubuntu a few years ago because they had really commercialized it with Ubuntu One and they started promoting stuff and they've backed off. They've really backed off. And now Ubuntu is just easy to install, has the best support for the widest variety of hardware. It's the closest analog to a commercial operating system that's absolutely free. So if you've been thinking about Linux, it is really easy to install. You're going to get one of these USB keys. I should install it. We used to do that on the screensavers all the time. You're going to take a USB key. You're going to go to Ubuntu and download it. Uh, just download the stock version. They have other versions, though, for low-power hardware for... Um, uh, oh, you know, they have an Edu, Edu Ubuntu. In fact, why don't I look at the versions? I'll just show you real quickly because this is kind of fun. Uh, learn more about Ubuntu. I think that's where I go. The long term support release is nice because they don't update it very often, they just keep it secure. And that is really great. You don't have to worry about tweaking it. It comes with a, a Open Office, which is a free, compatible with Microsoft Office experience. You can put Chrome on it via Chrome, the Chromium project, which I recommend. You can use everything you, you use really on your Windows machine, and I really like that. Again, choose the version that you like. There are a variety of them. I think for most people, 1604 of standard Ubuntu is fine, but you'll see they have a, a variety of other versions as well. They have educational versions. They have a version which is kind of fun uh, for uh, media creation types with audio editing in it, and a variety of uh, other software so that uh, for video and stuff, there's a media version. Uh, they have a Chinese version, Kai Lin. They've really done a great job. Anyway, you download it, you put it on a USB stick, and for almost all hardware, if you just put the USB stick in, you may have to turn off Secure Boot on modern Windows hardware. Unfortunately, they use Secure Boot. You'll have to go in the BIOS, turn on Legacy Booting. I'm gonna reboot this machine and I can just start the install right now. What do you say? Go for it. I think it. before the show is over, uh, we will we will have an, uh, a completely updated Ubuntu machine. This is a, a late model Dell. Uh, I think it came out in 2015. <clears throat> and so it's a little bit of, of an expensive <laughs> machine that was designed to run Windows. But one of the things that's cool about Dell is they have, uh, they have done really well supporting uh, uh, Ubuntu. In fact, they ship machines uh, with Ubuntu on it. And so as a result, you're going to have very a very easy time getting this to work. You're going to go into BIOS, boot to uh, the USB key. Again, turn off secure boot, turn on legacy boot, boot to the USB key. So I'm going to choose my USB storage device here. And this is a USB drive that I put the uh, Ubuntu ISO on. Now, you'll need to use some special software to do that. Ubuntu explains very clearly how to put it on here so that it's a bootable disk. You can't just copy the ISO off. I'm going to boot into it. And I don't know if you remember the days when we installed Linux in the past, uh, but it was a little bit more tricky than it is now. This is what we call a live CD or a live USB key. That means the first thing that's going to happen is Ubuntu is actually going to run off of the uh, drive in a way that I can see if all my hardware works. So your choice will be to try Ubuntu, and you could do that if you want to make sure your camera works and your uh, your internet works and all of the hardware, and that you should check that works to verify it. 
That's a good idea, but if you know that it'll work, and I know it will, I'm going to now install Ubuntu on this machine. And we'll, I'm going to show you real quickly. We can just walk through this. I usually check this box. This makes sure that if you have proprietary Wi-Fi hardware or graphics cards, that those will be installed. And that's something that they do just to make sure that you don't want the traditional free version mm -hmm. from the Free Software Foundation. You want, you're want you willing to put proprietary software on here. And in this case, I would do it because modern laptops often have to have some special right. proprietary drivers for the Intel chips or the Wi-Fi cards. In this case, it's a Broadcom card and it does need a special driver. So it's going to actually check the hardware, see what it needs, start copying over. Um, we're going to let it run. Uh, and I will walk you, well, actually I can do one more step here, and this is another one I want to encourage you to do. You can encrypt the installation, which means the hard drive will be encrypted. That means no one without that password can look at what's on your hard drive. Good idea, right? Yes. It Does not slow age. it down at all. And also, I recommend you use the Logical Volume Manager, or LVM. That sets it all up. That's all you have to do. Just check those two boxes. It's going to ask me for a security key. Hide your eyes, Megan. Mm -hmm. I don't want anybody okay. to know. This is the key that will unlock my hard drive. You will have to enter it each time Tell you reboot the machine. <laughs> uh, and that's a good thing, okay? I'm not going to have it overwrite empty disk space because that takes too long, but it's probably a good idea if you've used this computer before and there's any personal data on it that it wipes the drive. This is all nice that this is mm -hmm. built in. And then encrypts it, and it's going to keep it completely safe. And then to continue... Make sure I'm going to repartition the hard drive. I'm going to erase everything that's existing on here. Choose my locale, which is West Coast. I think it's going to ask me then what keyboard. Yep. Is it an English U.S. keyboard? Yep. And then I'm going to tell it my login. Now, remember, we tell, tell people this all the time. Don't run as root. You want to create a separate account that is not your root account. So I'm going to say my name is Leo Laporte, and this is my 2015... I mean, you can name this anything you want, but I always name it what the hardware is. And I'm going to put a password on here. This is my login password. You don't have to have a login. It, it can log in automatically. I recommend you do for security. And then I always encrypt my home folder separately as well. That's a good idea. Now this is going to be a secure machine that nobody can get onto without me giving them the password to. And I love it when encryption is this easy. You never have to worry about that again. It's going to start copying files over. And before the show is over, I'll have a running copy of Ubuntu on this laptop. Great way to revitalize old hardware, to make a more secure system. Um, and whenever these long-term versions come out, the LTS versions, that's the time to jump on it. You're going to have the latest software. It's all been tested thoroughly, so it's as bug-free as possible. They will patch it automatically, just as Windows does and, and Apple does automatic downloads. But this is going to be a version of Ubuntu that is rock solid, and I really, really like this. It's been extensively tested. So let's let that run. I'm so glad you showed that, because a lot of times when people say this is so easy, Did you see how not, easy that was? It was very easy. Do you want a little blast from the past? Yeah. Uh, I just looked this up. Uh, January 18th, 2002, I installed Mandrake. <laughs> Yes. Linux. Uh, I used a CD-ROM. You remember those? Yes. Yeah. On the we were famous. The screensavers. Yeah. We installed Linux in year one, year two. We installed it more times on live television than everybody done it before. And I thought we haven't done that in a long time. Yeah. And it's it's different. It's so much it's easier. I mean, I'm literally done. It is now installing. The next thing we see, I will log in, and it'll be about five minutes, ten minutes. It doesn't take very long. Mm -hmm. And this will now be a Linux box. And in my opinion, I'll be honest. Frankly, every bit is good. I think as uh, OS 10 or Windows. I mean, I really think they've come a long way. Uh, I know people make jokes about Linux for the desktop. What is this the year for Linux and the desktop? I think it is. I really, I think every year is. And especially with the issues people have been having with Microsoft kind of forcing Windows 10 on mm -hmm. them, the privacy concerns people have. Uh, I have to say, more and more, I've been using Linux. And you can run your own Minecraft server on it as well.